Hey friend, welcome, 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 welcome to another session where we just connect our hearts together and of course that lets you know that you are not alone. I'm really so happy about today's topic because it's something that is really controversial in society today. Come with me. We've been seeking God for blessing, 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 blessing. How about hard work brings a blessing? Hard work brings a blessing. You know, ladies and gentlemen, we live in such a generation where people want to get it quick, 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 quick. Some people will tell you that, oh, I don't have time for hard work. I just need smart work. And I'm like, okay, smart work. Smart, I'm in love with the word smart. But what do you mean by you don't want hard work, you want smart work? Like basically this is a controversial issue out there. So please, I want to hear your thoughts about this. What do you think about this? But personally for me, I know that hard work brings a blessing. Let's look at it from the light of the scriptures. Now, most importantly, what we are trying to say in this content is that while you're seeking God for a blessing, oh God bless me, Lord, I need a job, Lord, I need a spouse, Lord, I need a friend, Lord, I need to travel, whatever you're seeking God as a blessing, I just know that when there is hard work attached to it, like when you're busy doing something, then God steps in and blesses that thing. If you want a friend, you must first be friendly. If you want to travel, then you must first be like maybe pursuing scholarships or maybe at least looking out for what is happening in the international sphere. How are the prices of flights? How are the opportunities out there? Is the travel restriction opened or banned or something like that? Like you must be gathering information. You must be doing something and and that is a step of faith which is enough for God to bless you because like we said in the other video that God is looking for a mustard seed kind of faith in order to bless and this is very important because when you are doing something then you are able to attract a blessing and just come to think of it when you're doing something you're already attracting people right for example you're attracting the necessary network to yourself people are like oh I know that girl she does this kind of stuff and she does it real good so when they need someone who would offer that service people will easily recommend you and when you are recommended you will do it and you will get a blessing you will get blessed by it maybe financially spiritually I don't know whatever blessing you're seeking God for it's as important as that I remember when I was learning driving last year and someone was like you don't have a car why are you learning driving and I'm like it's my step of faith if I am asking God to give me a car now what will I do with it if I don't know how to drive so since I want God to give me a car I want to go to a driving school I want to learn how to drive so that when God sees me doing all of this thing investing my effort to be like oh my daughter my daughter is is ready she she's taking a step of faith so I'm going to reward that step of faith that's just basically it besides there is something about attraction by the time you are in a particular sphere trying to do something you are already attracting the resources connected to that thing you're already attracting the destiny help pass around that thing connected to you in order to step in and help you to tell you the truth even though we are asking God all the times Lord bless me Lord bless me but the truth is God uses human vessels to bless us he doesn't leave his throne above then comes and visits you and just outpour and just pour down the thing on you like that I'll pour it on you like that no even though he's outpouring the blessing on you he would use human verses to bless you he may use someone to give you a financial idea that if you put to work will generate you money that will help you build that business that will help you build that marriage or that friendship relationship or whatever that will help you just connect you to that blessing that you've been crying to God for for example if you're crying God for a wife or a husband the wife husband is not going to fall from the sky it's someone in the earth and you will need someone will know someone I mean you and that person will have to meet somewhere it could be in church it could be at school it could be at work and so there are interconnected people that God will use there are circumstances events that God will use and God will speak to people to confirm what you have within you as conviction or confirmations so what I'm trying to say is there is some level of hard work that is attached to you wanting any blessing that you really need in your life you must be doing something and so on a very good day when God gets up from his throne above and he's like whoo 
The angels have praised me another. I've had enough of praise, enough of praise, enough of praise. Now it's time. I want to wake up. I heard my people praising me on the face of the earth. Now I want to outpour a blessing. Where is that person who was not just praising me, but who was actually doing something? Son, what is in your hands? Daughter, what is in your hands? I want to increase it. I want to multiply it. I want to bless it. No wonder the scriptures cannot be broken. The scriptures say, to whom much is given, much is required. That means if God is giving you much blessings and then he requires that you should be doing something better, something better with it. He said in his word that he gave some people one talent, he gave some people two, he gave some people five. So that requires you to do some work. If God gave you five, you should be bringing ten back. If he gave you two, you should be bringing four back. You must not bring ten back, but bring four back because he gave you two, you should multiply it. If he gave you one, he's not expecting you to bring back ten or Four. He's expecting you to at least bring back two. That means you should be in the business of multiplying. When he sees that you're faithful in little, he's going to bless you with more. Because he said, anyone who is faithful in little will be faithful in much. And to that servant who will do nothing with his or her own talent, God will take it from that person and then give it to someone who is actually doing something, doing something, doing something. So do you think that those who are out there doing something is because God has given them all the resources they need? God has given them all the connection they need? God has given them everything they ever desired? No, but people are just out there doing what they can do with what they have at hand while trusting God for the next steps ahead. So, if you're asking God, God, I want to go to school, please provide me school fee. Yes, while you're asking God to please provide you school fee, you should at least be doing some day jobs around. You should start doing some little businesses around. You should volunteer to work for some people. And you should just do something. When God sees your effort, He will bless you. How do you expect God to bless you? How do you expect God to bless you when you're not doing something? God wants you to do something so that He can bless you through what you are doing. Do you remember the woman whom the prophet visited? The prophet was like, bring many vessels, bring not a few, bring many vessels. And she was like, oh, she was just emptying up all the vessels in the house and was bringing, bringing, making sure that everything is empty, clean, empty. And the servant of God was pouring the oil and the oil was, it kept overflowing. She was bringing more vessels, it kept overflowing until there were no vessels left. So the amount of vessels that you have, that's where God is going to do the outpouring. Where your hard work is, where your heart is dedicated to doing something, that's where God steps in. God is like, oh, this my servant has been faithful. This my servant has been faithful. This my servant has been faithful. Where I sent her, she's there doing what I sent her to do. Where I sent him, he's there doing what I sent him to do. So on a very good day, I want to bless this my son. I want to bless this my daughter. I have seen her working so hard. I have seen her being faithful in the little things I gave her. Now it's time to promote her. Now it's time to dignify him. God is looking for someone to dignify. God is looking for someone to bless. Is that you? Is that you? Get up from that bed. Stop crying those tears day in, day out and saying, God bless me, yet you're doing nothing. God wants you to get up and do something. Because he would use human verses to bless you. Because he needs vessels to bless you so you must be able to make available vessels the vessel of your heart the vessel of your home the vessel of your connections the vessel of everything you can do the vessels of your strengths and ability god wants you to do something your hard work no wonder the bible says in the book of proverbs that a man's gifts will make a way a woman's gifts will make a way your gifts will make a way for you and i really love it this way it also says that seest thou a man <laughs> diligent in his business come on ladies seest thou a lady diligent in her business seest thou a boy a girl diligent in her business what will happen what will happen he will stand before kings he will not stand before mean men she would sit with queens. She would not sit with mean women. That's what God is saying to you. That you should be diligent. What is the meaning of diligence? Diligence is extreme hard work. God wants you to be 
committed. God wants you to be consecrated in whatever he has put in your hands to do. Your gifts will make a way for you. All those natural abilities you have, all those strengths you have. My dear, stop feeling inferior. Stop allowing inferiority complex to chop off your relevance in life. Time is not on your side. We have just a limited time in this world. I don't want you at the marriage supper of the Lamb when God is putting beautiful crowns on people's head and giving them beautiful rewards. You sit there and you're like, oh, God, I have no crown. I have no reward. You have no reward because you didn't do anything relevant or you were not in the place where God had called you to be. The Bible says that our works will be tried and tested by fire. Only the ones that will stand through the fire. What is the motive of you doing what you're doing? Is that what God has called you to do? How diligent are you? How hardworking are you? How on fire are you? The purpose he has put in your hands, the calling he has called you to fulfill. What are you doing about it? Stop just crying. God bless me. God bless me. Of course God wants to bless you. God says in his word that I wish above things that you prosper and be in good health even as your soul prospereth. God wants you to definitely prosper. But again, Again, my dear, again, again, and again, and again. What are you doing? Are you just sitting and whining and grinding and blaming God for all your misfortunes, your sorrows, your heartaches, your pains, your disappointments, your rejections, your failures, your frustrations? Are you just sitting and blaming God? What would you want Him to do? Like, we are. God's own heartbeat. God loves us. He says that if our earthly fathers know how to give good things to us, how much more our heavenly father. That means God has good things in store for us. But he wants us to be in the right disposition to receive them. He wants us to be in the right disposition to actually have them. He wants us to be in the right disposition in actually to function and operate in them. And so he's telling you this moment right now that my daughter, I have seen your tears. My son, I have seen your tears. But that is not enough. I want you to do something because when you are doing something that is when I can rise up and bless you God is a God of principles and he never changes no wonder some poor people become rich no wonder some evil people around us are prospering because they are keeping the principles as a man thinketh in his heart so we say as a woman thinketh in her heart so we say for whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he reap. Whatsoever a woman soweth, that shall she reap. What are you sowing? Are you sowing laziness? Morning to evening, you're rotating on your bed. Are you sowing despair? Always having something negative to say. Are you sowing idleness? Just roaming about, gossiping about any and everything. Are you sowing unrighteousness? Moving about to and fro in envy, malice, resentment, jealousy, hatred, hypocrisy. What are you sowing? Because whatever you are sowing, that is what you are going to reap. It's not me who is saying it. It's the word of God. God is saying to you, get up and sow seeds of hard work and diligence. Get up and do a business. Get up and do a trade. Get up and go to school. Get up and start that marriage. Get up and build that relationship. I am going to do a new thing. Shall you not know it? I will do a thing that eyes have not seen nor ears heard. Neither has it entered into the heart of man. If you love me, I will do this great thing for you the bible is making us to understand that for god shall do exceedingly abundantly above all we can ever ask or think through his power that worketh in us through the power of christ that worketh in us my dear what has god placed in your hands to do uh -uh. so you think some of us who are sitting and doing all these kind of things we are doing is because god has given us all what we need to do it no no but we have understood by principle that god knows for those who can be able to be faithful in the little that god has called them to do god will bless them to become mighty to become great you see and the word of god is so true believe me when you're busy doing something it gives you exposure for example you see me communicating through you through um through this content when i communicate to you people get to know that oh she's a content creator oh she's a communication specialist she's a journalist and because of that if they have occasions that require someone who can do a presentation a tv program or they have they need a position for someone who can be an actress or an mc or just something related to communication when they are looking around their 
their inner circle they'll be like i know this lady and she's so eloquent and she's so gifted and she's so passionate and she's so they will start listing the qualities for you you wouldn't even need to go and start rushing after them they would be rushing after you destiny helpers will start rushing after you when they see your star they would want to locate that star but if you keep the star hidden how will your destiny help us locate your star if you keep your star in the dark and you're like no god i just want to be with you in this darkness asking for a blessing god is saying but my son my daughter i have given you gifts and talents go out there do something as you're doing it i'm giving you exposure already exposure will bring favor favor will outpour you a blessing do you understand you need to wake up and do something how are we going to let us be a channel of blessing to you if we have not seen you being diligent or committed to something get up and do something that's why you see some evil people around us are prospering why the righteous are in want and in peril and in sorrow and are crying unto God day and night but God is saying my hands are tied if you don't want to do something because unless you do something how am I supposed to bless and increase it God wants to bless increase and multiply what you are doing already young girl stop being lazy stop chasing men for money stop selling your body for money wake up and do something wake up and do something young boy Stop wasting your life away in drunkenness, scamming. Wake up and do something. Wake up and do something. God wants to bless you. God wants to increase you. God wants to multiply you. God wants to outpour on you a blessing like you've never seen before. If only you'll be diligent and committed because to him that is able to be faithful in little, then such a servant will be faithful in much because when you're faithful in little it's a grooming process believe me it's a grooming process when you're faithful in little ah the resources are not enough but you're managing it you're managing the situations are not convenient but you're managing it you're managing it doesn't look like what you've always dreamt and hoped for but you are grateful for it you're grateful for it it doesn't look like what others were expecting but it's okay you are dignifying it because you know that if you dignify the 40 today god will bless you with the forty thousands and 40 millions tomorrow and and it's like a preparatory ground like I said a grooming ground where when you get perched when you get prepared when God gives you the bigger stage when God gives you the bigger blessing you would be able to manage the bigger blessing because you have already understood the dynamics of managing the smaller blessings but if you are just sitting there idle doing nothing and just hoping and just wishing if wishes were horses beggars would ride so even in the kingdom of god blessings don't come cheap because if they come cheap you will just misuse them and when you misuse them it will be of no value it will be of no value and when it's of no value you wouldn't have any iota of gratitude and appreciation because you don't even see the value in your life in the first place so god wants you to wake up and do something and to make him know that you are that kind of a person that if he blesses you will be a blessing because god is blessing us to be a blessing to others what would be the point of god giving you the blessing and you're just keeping everything to yourself god wants that as he's blessing you you should bless others and while you are expecting a blessing from god please be a blessing to others because we all are interconnected and interdependent no wonder the bible makes us to understand that when job prayed for his friends god gave him twice as much as he had before his predicament didn't stop till he prayed for his friends and his situation didn't change till he prayed for his friends so when you start thinking of being a blessing to others then god will step in and make you a blessing and how can you be a blessing if you are not hard working because to pray for others will take hard work to give others something will take hard work for you to stand in the gap for others will take hard work for you to render a service to others it will take hard work so while you're rendering services to others God is grooming you in the process God is pruning you in the process God is purging you in the process and at the appointed time he blesses you beyond measure he knows that if he gives you this blessing you're not going to waste it you're not going to squander it away you're going to make use of it you're going to value and cherish it and you're going to do something great with it that will bring him glory and will be a blessing to humanity so ladies and gentlemen 
What has God spoken into your heart today regarding the blessings you've been seeking Him for? You've been praying for a child. Have you been kind, gracious to other people's children? Have you worked hard to ensure that other people's children are having a good life? That they are well dressed, well fed, taken care of, feel loved? While you're asking God for a wife or a husband, what have you done to others when they are getting married or in their marital homes? How have you been a blessing to them? Have you been praying for them? Have you been at their service? Have you been rendering one help to them or the other? While you're asking God, please, I want to go to school. What have you done? Have you even tried to even start a petty business around that you can generate any little amount of income to send yourself to school? Have you enrolled in that school as a step of faith, trusting God that God, I am already in the school, so please don't embarrass yourself. Just do the most you can to provide my fee and my rent. Why? Because I have taken the step of faith, I've worked hard, I have come to this school and by your grace I am making good results raise up people to support me because you know with this results I can make you proud before you're asking God God I need financial help I need professional help I need any kind of help that you're asking God for have you made a step a step of faith a step of hard work believing that God will see it and then God will increase it and multiply it because nothing nothing is just empty space nothing will definitely not have the ability to be multiplied but when there is something then multiplication can occur geometrically it can occur Mathematically, it can afford, but at least there should be something. That's why God is asking us for a mustard seed kind of faith. That faith that we can be able to take the first step to do something. And then while we are doing that something, we know that God steps in and then multiplies it, increases it, establishes it, and makes it prosper. So, dear friend, know that God loves you. God wants the best for you. God is willing to bless you, and He is saying to you today, my child go out there and do something stop sleeping stop wasting your life away I've told you to go to the ants and learn they are busy doing something they are not busy gossiping backbiting slandering hating being jealous envious they are busy working the Bible says in 1st Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 11 that let every one of us study to be quiet and do our own business, mind our own business, and work with our hands. Work with your hands, and God will bless your neighbor. It's more blessed to give than to receive. Stop sitting and wallowing in self-pity and just expecting people to give, give, give unto you. Make up your mind that you're going to give unto others. Give them whatever costs you, your time, your money, your talents, your skills, what you know, give them. Always seek for ways to give. Encouragement, a pat on the back, a warm hug. Give them. Share your life experiences with others to bless them, to encourage them. Give. Always look for means to give. Because in being a blessing, that's how you attract God's blessings. And the more you attract God's blessings, get those blessings and give it back to others. Because that's the essence of life. When God blesses you, He's blessing you to bless others. When God sends you ahead, He sends you ahead to preserve lives. You can ask Joseph. When Joseph's brothers thought they were selling him to slavery, God was merely taking him through that prison, through that darkness, to kingship. When he became prime minister, and his brothers later saw him bowing down to him, and they were trying to apologize, he told them, no, you don't need to, brothers. It's okay. God was only sending me ahead of you to preserve lives. How many of us have such attitudes today? Like Joseph, who would say, I'm not going to get back at my brothers. But we rather tell them that God was sending me ahead to preserve lives. How many of us who have that kind of attitude of Job, that after they have accused us, after they have rejected us, written us off, we are able to say, God bless my friends. God protect my friends. God show mercy on my friends. How many of us are willing to do that today? It takes hard work, friend. It takes hard work. Get up from your slumber. It takes hard work. Yes, God is hearing your prayers. God is seeing your heart. God is watching your tears. It takes hard work. 
and God will bless the desires of your heart as you wake up to work hard trusting him to bless it in Jesus name thank you very much ladies and gentlemen thank you so much it's always such a great blessing to be with you if you were blessed by this content please do it to share it right away share it to bless others because whenever you get blessed please do well to share to bless others and most importantly if this is on the Facebook page do well to follow the Facebook page and if you're watching this video on our YouTube channel the Ruth Makochi Media Network please do well to subscribe right now right away don't forget to press the notification bell so that you always get to be the first to be notified of all our content on this channel which lets you know that you are not alone and that you are dearly loved i love you so much i hope you enjoyed this session it's always a great blessing being with you all my prayers are with you and i pray god to support and see you through as you work hard god will bless the works of your hands in jesus name thank you for watching and until next time it's a bye bye <laughs> work hard <laughs> and God will bless you in Jesus name I love you <laughs>